Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to another episode of AWS This Week. There's been quite a few announcements this week, including Amazon's Cognito user pools are now generally available, VMware Cloud on AWS is now available, Amazon EC2 Elastic GPUs for Windows have become available, Amazon Aurora launches its fast database cloning service, descriptions are now available for security group rules, and now you can use your application load balancers to balance your applications to on-premise web servers. I'm Ryan Krunenberg and you're watching AWS This Week. So this week, Amazon's Cognito user pools have become generally available. And Amazon Cognito is a managed cloud service that allows you to add authentication, authorization, user management to your web applications, your mobile apps, and even your IoT applications. So when people are signing into your site or app, you can leverage Cognito to handle in this sign-in process. So user pools allow you to group your users into directory for easy management. And AWS have actually gone one step further, and they've created AWS hosted user sign-up page and sign in UI pages. It's a very similar look to Auth0. So this means you don't have to worry about creating your own sign-in page anymore. Amazon handle it all for you. So VMworld has just finished in Las Vegas. And for those of you that don't know, it's VMware's cloud conference. And uh, it's very similar to reInvent, essentially. And uh, this year, they've announced that VMware Cloud is now available on AWS. And they hinted at that uh, last year at reInvent. It is now officially available. And why would you want to do this? Well, many enterprises have invested you know, significant amounts of money into VMware in terms of like training their staff, software licenses, operations teams, etc. And this can make moving to AWS really hard and risky. So VMware uh, on AWS is uh, designed to solve this, and it's basically sold, delivered, and supported and built by VMware. It supports custom-sized virtual machines, it runs any OS that is supported by VMware, and it makes use of single-tenant bare metal AWS infrastructure so that you can actually bring over your Windows servers licenses to it as well. So if you're used to using VMware, things like vCenter, vSphere, vSAN, NSX all work on this platform, but the actual physical infrastructure infrastructure is all hosted by AWS. So at reInvent last year, Amazon announced EC2 Elastic GPUs, uh, and it was only available for Linux instances. And an Elastic GPU is basically a resource that you can attach to your EC2 instance to accelerate the graphics performance of your applications. And they're best suited for applications that require a small or intimate amount of GPU power or graphics acceleration and that support OpenGL. Now, Randall Hunt uh, announced this on his blog. He's actually a former SpaceX employee and is now an AWS event and he actually demonstrated this by installing the Cabal Space Program app on a Windows instance and then launched his own custom designed rocket ships. And I encourage you to go onto the AWS platform and give it a go yourself. Now, a really cool feature announced this week is Amazon Aurora launching fast database cloning. And if you work with databases, say in two terabytes of size on RDS, maybe they're MySQL databases or PostgreSQL databases, creating a copy of this can actually take several hours. Now, with Aurora, it's going to take you five minutes, and most of that time is spent provisioning the RDS instance. So if you're working with large data sets on RDS using MySQL or PostgreSQL, you might want to consider moving over to Aurora because you can clone your data bases really, really quickly now. So if you've done any of my associate courses, you'll be very familiar with security groups, especially in the VPC sections of the course. And if you remember, you could only give them a name, you couldn't give them a description. So descriptions are now actually available for both security groups themselves, as well as rules within a security group. So let's say you've got security group one, you might describe that as your web DMZ group. Or let's say you've got port 22 open to the world, you might describe that as SSH access or administrator access. And it just makes things easier to administer especially for new people who are new to system admining and they might not know what individual ports or protocols do. So about this time last year, Amazon released a new type of load balancing service called an application load balancer. And these are layer seven load balancers so that your load balancers can make much more intelligent load balancing decisions and be closer to the application layer. The drawback to this though, was you could only load balance to EC2 instances within AWS. You couldn't load balance to on-premise web servers. Well, Amazon have now just changed this. So you can actually use your application load balancers for your on-premise web servers. And all you need to do is give your application load balancer the IPv4 address of your on-prem servers. 
So that's it for this week's episode, but before I go, I wanted to announce that we're proud to sponsor the Cloudcast. Now, if you haven't heard of it, it's a great podcast by Aaron Delt and Brian Gracely. It's about 30 minutes long and it runs every single week, and it's great to listen to on the way to work. It's not just AWS, it's everything to do with cloud, from Azure to VMware, from Ansible to Chef, etc. It's anything cloud related, and it's also on your Amazon Echo, so you can open it just by saying, Alexa, start the Cloudcast. Welcome back. You were just starting episode 310, the mid-year 2017 update. You have 37 minutes and 53 seconds left. It's a long episode this week. From the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the Cloudcast with Alan Dell and Brian Gracely, presented by a Cloud Guru. Keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus. See you next week. Bye-bye.